I've been doing a series on Livermore, and I just grabbed the first quote that kind of halfway related to it from Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. I'm doing a series over on stock over at Stock Charts, and uh, those videos are on my website if you want to watch them, the links to the YouTubes and all. But anyway, one thing that Livermore talks a lot about, especially as you get a little further into the book, Chapter 8, Chapter 9, is that he was a little too hyperactive, and that all started because he was in the bucket shops. And this, again, this is just first chapter here. I just pulled this, but there's a lot more further in the book. Of course, I let the craving for excitement get the better of my judgment. In a bucket shop where your margin is a shoestring, you don't play for the long pulls. You're wiped too easily and quickly. The desire for constant action, irrespective of underlying conditions, is responsible for many losses in Wall Street, even among the professionals who feel that they must take home some money every day as though they were working for regular wages. I try to pull money out the market every day. Try being the key word in that sentence. And when, when we finally catch some big winners with the trend following, the swing to intermediate term trend following, it reminds me that, hey, you don't have to be like that rat going for that cocaine all the time. The real big money is in the big pool, as Livermore says. Now, in the bucket shops, what happened was they they would take the orders, but they wouldn't actually send them to the exchange. So they would bucket the pro they would bucket the order, so to speak, because most traders lost and they had them on margin. So all they had to do was wipe them out, uh, 10 percent margin, and then they were gone. But Livermore was able to beat the system because he would track the prices and if the prices was going higher he would buy and if they were going lower he would short and with a 10 percent margin wipeout it's like you had a 10 percent stop every time you played so you'd get wiped out they'd take all your money and then you would start again so you had an automatic stop in place but what the bucket shop did was you got an instant fill they would give you the price of the stock based on the last fill it was the last it was a less active stock. You would have to wait for the next price to come in. But Livermore got wiped out several times when he got to New York, thinking that he'd go trade on the exchange and be closer to the market. But being in the bucket shop, he actually had an advantage, and that's why he was doing all the day trading in the bucket shop. When he got to New York, he'd send an order out to sell at 100, and then it was a fast market. His fill would come back at 80, and that's about the price that he'd want to cover, right? And so he would. He would go in and say, okay, well, I think it's done. It's starting to go up, whatever. So he'd go in thinking he's going to get 80 to buy it, you know, buy the cover and then buy the stock or whatever, and he could fill it at 100. And that's one of the times he got wiped out in New York. Anyway, the real money is in the longer term trend trade. And I want to come back to this SYM. It's the first big winner we had in a little while. And one thing that was kind of interesting here is once you're committed to a market and you're not stopped out, so this is a little bit added bonus thing I want to talk about. Then you let the chips fall where they may. And I know it's hard to have a stock go against you, but if that's what your system says, you need to give it some room, then you have to give it some room. So you can see here, we initially and very quickly had a loss of $1,230. And then at this point here, we were up 2K and that's where you bank 1,000. Because 2K, 100K account, you bank 1,000 meaning that you sell half your shares, and then you trail a stop higher. Now, notice here, the market tanked, okay? And you gave up $1,000 of that open profit. And it's frustrating to give up open profits and getting back to the turtles once again. I quote those guys a lot, I guess. But Dennis was okay with open profit losses with the longer term trend following, following and that's where we are now in the longer term trend following mode. And as I've said a thousand times, a lot of people complain at the end when you're riding a trend for, for weeks, months, sometimes even years. And at the end, you give up, let's say you give up five grand in the end, but you made $20,000 on the trade overall. People will complain to me, Dave, we gave up too much money. Well, you're going to give up money every time the stock, there's a little drawdown or pullback, which is actually healthy. And then, of course, you never know when that last pullback is the last pullback. And as I've said a thousand times, I've told people, look, I'm sorry you're upset. 
send me a check for 20,000 or whatever it is, keep a couple hundred bucks out, go get a massage so you can center yourself and forget about it. And in 30 years of doing this, I've never gotten a check in the mail. Like I said, the stock charts show, I've gotten some tips here and there, like a, a, a little tip, but I've never gotten any cash from somebody who was upset about an open profit drawdown. So at this point here, there was 25.43 open. And then remember you banked a thousand. So 35.43. Now it was about a point higher by the close after I grabbed this stock. I think close at 41 and change. So this number is slightly bigger. And I'll continue to follow up with it over time. But you can see that the point I'm trying to make here is that the real money is in catching these longer term trends. Now they can be a little elusive and I've gotten criticized for saying that because it sounds too elusive, but they don't come along every day. And I think Livermore really kind of pounds that, that point home. And I, I've kind of forced myself into studying Livermore a lot by putting on this series. And I had no idea how long it would take and how much work, but we're already on part seven of it. And then I, I read his biography again, and then I'm reading How to Trade Stocks. So on top of Reminiscence, I'm gonna get on those other two books as part of the presentation. But anyway, you, you, you always get a lot of good stuff from Livermore. Now, he wasn't perfect, and he um, he ended up putting a bull in his head. <laughs> he, he married a woman whose four prior husbands killed themselves, and then he kills himself. It's like he just, he didn't always make the best decisions. He ended up bankrupt at one point, and but his estate, he like gave his estate to the wife or something through a trust or whatever, and, and she let it go to ruins. It's a, it's a mess, but a lot of the stuff he tells you, it's like do what he tells you, not everything he actually does. But going for the big pull, don't be in and out too much, sit on your hands when the time is right. He talked about two forms of sitting. One, you sit on your hands when there's nothing to do. Two, you sit on your hands once you're in a position, and I hope I'm not jinxing it, but like SYM and see what happens. Okay. Speaking of the big poll, let's take a look at the TFM 10% and the Qs. So again, this is the weekly system, and you can see this is a weekly chart here. And just, just for the new people and people on YouTube, this is 10% below the 50-week closing high, okay? So here's your closing high there back in, was that, 2022? And here is the, what I call the buy line, which is 10% below that. It's also the sell line, too. When you close below it in the 50 simple moving average, that's it. You get out, okay? To get back in, a little bit, a few more rules just because it's to keep you from uh, getting caught up in a whipsaw. You need two lows greater than the moving average, and that's a 50-week moving average. Just to keep the math simple. Everything's 50. And you have to close above the buy line. So you have to close within 10% of the 50-week closing on. It's hard to believe that the NASDAQ and the S&P is within 10% of the 50-week closing high. And that's uh, that's just pretty cool, I think. Now you can see one bar one, bar two of Landry Light, lows greater than the moving average. The buy was there. I think I got in a little early on that Friday. Just 100 shares for S&Gs to see what would happen. And you know what? Those stupid little hundred shares, when I took this screen snapshot at 35.95, okay, I had a 33 point profit and change, and you multiply that by 100. So that's $3,346 for doing nothing but sit here, okay? I placed that one order on a Friday afternoon, that was it. And I've done nothing ever since. So the real money is in the longer term trends. And as much as showing you, I'm reminding myself how important it is to, to work for the big pull, to work for the longer term trends. And here's just a small kind of, I don't want to say token trade because it's $30,000. It's nothing to sneeze at, 32. But it's not a, a huge investment and it's already paid off, knock on wood, nicely. So let's just see how it shakes out. We could, could get stopped out and, and lose money. Who knows? But so far, so good. So let's see how this shakes out. But it, it just exemplifies how the real money is in the longer term trading. Now, you can't just be a pure longer term trader. That's why we have the hybrid approach to the money management. I don't really have any money management per se built into this TFM thing, but maybe it could use a little bit. Maybe that'll be version 2.0. We'll incorporate money management in. And we're, when you're up 30 or 40 points or whatever the case may be, maybe you go ahead 
and peel off some shares.